that don't not, not like you. Are you guys ready? Are, they, are, are you guys ready? Because they're saying, okay, they're talking on the side. They're saying, yeah. Okay, so media is in the room. So thank you for joining us. A white boy until he cries like a baby back bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you saying. Watch that the other day. I was afraid to do it, man, because I thought the movie. I was like, man, that's my favorite. Original, well, my favorite movie. And I was like, I don't want to repeat that. That's too good of a movie. It's just acting. All right, Mike, we're gonna get started here if you're all set. Um, so, media, thank you for joining today's Super Bowl 55 media availability with Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver Mike Evans. To ask a question, please use the raise hand function. Are we ready? You will be asked to unmute your microphone. You said they, they thought they were ready now, but um, and then you will be called on. Please yet. make sure your first, last name, and affiliation is displayed. For the first question, please. we're going to go to Michael please. Irvin with the NFL Network. I guess for the Mike, how are you, buddy? Uh, Mike, let me just start right in this, man. Since 2014, You've been with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers through some lean time. Have you ever had any doubt that you would get to this Super Bowl? Um, I, I would say so. I had some doubts, definitely. But, um, you know, I just did my job, and our front office did a great job of putting putting this team together, this unbelievable team. And, uh, you know, we've been working hard. We've always had talent. It was just getting over the hump, you know, beating ourselves with dumb penalties and, and things like that. But, you know, I'm happy to be here. Mike, Mike, you and I were just talking about it off air, playing basketball. You, yeah. you talk about the longest yard and the basketball scene mm. in the longest yard. You too, like had, you too play basketball. Many offers, man. You had many offers. You took yeah. football over basketball. Tell me, what NBA player most resembles your game? <laughs> None of them. They're all much better than I am. But uh, I, I get that question a lot. I don't know how my game would have shaped out if I went to college and – you know what I'm saying? Got the training and prepared like those guys. But I'll say like a blue collar Jimmy Butler type, like a poor man's Jimmy Butler. That's a good player right there now. Jimmy yeah, you Butler. play hard on both ends, offense, defense, a two-way, good two-way player. Uh, high and he got some dog in him too now. He got some dog. He'll talk yeah, about and we're back similar. And forth. We're similar in size. I see he, he thinks that he could be a, a really good receiver, and I agree. I think he could be a, a great receiver uh, if he chose to play football, but you know, he's doing his thing in the NBA. Mike, I love how you like to mark your moments. Now, you actually mark your moments with tattoos or, or, on your body. This moment, playing in a Super Bowl at home, is, is as big as they get. Yeah. Well, how will you mark this moment if you win Super Bowl 55? Where would you mark it on your body? With That's the Super Bowl? a – you've been doing your homework. I like that. I like that. I've never heard nobody, you know, say that. But I do mark – you know, my moments with tattoos. And uh, if we win, absolutely, I'm getting a Lombardi somewhere on me. I don't know yet. Not my not my face, but maybe <laughs> neck or back or somewhere on my, on my arms. I don't know. I'm definitely going to mark it if we get the W. Speaking about moments, Mike, I said to you before and I'll say it to you again. You got Johnny Manziel, that Heisman. <laughs> no. And now you get a chance to give Tom Brady his seventh. Trophy seven Lombardi trophy. Mike, I say it comes down to these wide receivers all the time, man. Do you feel that pressure to deliver this Super Bowl like you delivered that Heisman? I didn't deliver that Heisman <laughs> that year. I was actually hurt that year, and Johnny was one of the best players that college football has ever seen. Real fun to play with that guy. Um, but I don't feel no pressure. No, I, I'm just going to do my job, uh, prepare the best way possible, stay in the film room, treat my body, get re real uh, rested, and uh, try to have my best performance. Last question, Mike, and, I, and I've always said, I love this question because I know how we are as wide receivers. How do you get to talk to the greatest quarterback of all time when you want to get the ball? How do you just kind of nudge him to, hey, I'm open, man, get me the football? Just, just, just how you said it. I'll tell him, be like, Tom, third down, look for me, or, or, or something like that. Or Tom, they're playing a lot of man right now. Look for me. And he knows that. And he knows that. I haven't had to say it much, I haven't had to say it much this year, but you know, he knows and he's a real cool guy to talk to. And if you if you want something from him, you gotta ask. You're a smart dude, man. You know how to handle the quarterback and the head coach. Just make sure you talk to him the right way and get yep. those passes. Keep them coming. But hey, good luck. Good luck, son, in the Super Bowl, buddy. Thanks. I right, appreciate you, big Mike. We'll now open it up to other media members to ask questions. 
We'll go with Mark Zero with the New York Post up next. Legend right there. Hey, Mike, Mark Canizaro from the New York Post. I have two, two questions. Um, one is on uh, on Tom Moore and just kind of, you know, what he's brought to the table and, and, and how, how remarkable it is that he's kind of able to resonate at his age with you guys and, and just, you know, how, how amazed are you at he, that he's still doing this at 82? Uh, Coach Moore is unbelievable. He's always in the meetings early and – he rarely smiles, but I got him to smile a couple of times this year and laugh, and it was great. He's an NFL history book, you know, a great offensive mind, and he's seen a lot, a lot of football. Uh, and he, he's a great asset to have on his team, and, and we love him. I, am I supposed to be seeing you, by the way? I can't see you. I can just hear you. Nope, just audio. They're out here. Okay, cool. Next up, we will go with Calvin Watkins with Dallas Morning News. <laughs> Hey, Mike, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mike, obviously, you being from Texas, and you know, Pat Mahomes, you know, high school football is big here. Just hey, what, did you hear of, <laughs> what, did, what did you hear of him? You know, obviously, once you play high school football in Texas, you never get away from it. Did you hear about him as because you were in the pros when he was in high school? Did you hear about Mahomes at all when he was in high school? Yeah, I heard about him. Uh, I kept up with high school football a little bit more back then because I was in college still. Right. Um, but he was an unbelievable player, especially when he was at Tech. I got to follow him because Kingsbury was my offensive coordinator um, one year when I was at AM. And I got to watch him, and he was one of the most fun players to watch in college. Uh, I didn't think that he got the the respect that he deserved while he was in college, although he was a you know a first round draft pick. I thought he should have been the number one draft pick, and I just thought he was a fantastic player. Uh, when I was watching them at Tech. Next up, we'll go to Ben Volan with the Boston Globe. Hey, Mike, uh, congrats on making it to the Super Bowl. Uh, wanted, to ask, wanted to ask you about your quarterback. Uh, a lot of focus is put on his like training regimen, how he takes care of his body, but uh, he seems to be a pretty smart guy out in the football field, too. He's played the game <laughs> for so long. Um, just curious, uh, what are your impressions of how smart he is as a quarterback? And do you have any examples um, of uh, how you've seen that on the field? Uh, the example is he just simplifies the game for us. Uh, he makes it so easy to communicate. This year, we've had the lowest amount of mental errors that I've ever seen, uh, that I've ever been a part of on the offense. Uh, and that's a testament to, to him and his knowledge. Uh, he, he puts us in situations to make the game like simple for us. Um, like you said, he's just a sm he's a smart guy, and that's why he's been doing it for so long. Next up is Mark Kenzie Johnson with ESPN, the undefeated. Hi, Mike. I had a question about your teammate Scotty Miller. Uh, I just asked Chris Godwin the same thing. You know, when did you realize how fast he actually is? Uh, when we first saw him, when we first saw him, he was blazing fast. We were lined up next to each other. We both got mirrored routes. I got to go. He got to go. And he's leaving me. And I started on the ball and he's, he was leaving me in practice. And in practice, I always try to like gauge my speed going against the other guys like Deshaun Jackson and Chris Godwin and all those guys that I played with, Antonio. And uh, I try to see when we got mirror routes, how fast I can go. And he was a couple yards ahead of me. So I knew he was real fast right away. Next up, we'll go to Matt Tanner with Sky Sports NFL. Sky Sports. Hi, Mike. Is that in UK? Yes, it is. My man. Um, how you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, there's so many offensive weapons on both sides, but I wanted to ask you specifically about Sammy Watkins. Can you just talk about his strengths as a receiver and if he's healthy, whether he can be an X factor for the Chiefs? Oh, he's a, he's a he's an unbelievable player. You know, throughout his career, he's he's de dealt with a lot of injuries, um, but he's a phenomenal player. He was the number one pick uh, for receivers in our, our 2014 draft class. And um, that was a, a really good choice. He's ex explosive, uh, physical, really good hands, can run routes. He doesn't have many weaknesses. He can go deep, can uh, yards after catch, and be physical. He just, uh, he just had some uh, misfortune with injuries. Next up is John Ledyard with PeterReport.com. 
Mike, this is the year that more than any other year that you've played uh, more snaps in the slot than ever before in your career. I was asking your receivers coach, Kevin Garber, about that process for you. Obviously, it's not like a totally new position or anything, but it is different a little bit, and you've had to do some different things this year. But just what has that process been like for you from going to a guy that played so much outside? Obviously, you've played in the slot some before this year, but not to the extent you have this year. So has that process been different for you? Has there been different things you've had to learn? No. It's just uh, I could I could run all the routes any spot on the field. Um, you know, this year it seems like they just wanted to know where 13 was at. A lot a lot of double teams this year. Um, so you know we got to be creative and, and putting me in spots where I won't get doubled as much and uh, coverage uh, show my, uh, uh, over me coverage over me. And um, you know I don't mind being a slot. I like it, uh, but I, I definitely love being outside. You know one on one matched up with the team's best corner. Next up, we'll go to Steve Isbitz with JoeBoxFan.com. Hey, Mike, did you hear from any of your former starting quarterbacks since you made the Super Bowl? And did they have any good words for you? And, and if so, can you say what maybe you've learned from some of those guys, uh, the fo- handful of guys you had through the years? I know that voice. How you doing, man? Um, doing good. Doing good. Yeah, my, they, yeah, they all hit me up and they, and they said, you know, congrats. Um, go ball out in, in the big game. Uh, and I've, I've learned a tremendous amount from all the quarterbacks that I've got the opportunity to, to play with uh, from, from college on up. We'll go to Kendra Douglas from WSH2. Hey, Mike. Um... This season has been pretty challenging for everybody, especially with COVID. And you guys have done such a good job with how you've handled it. Um, for you personally, did COVID impact you in any type of way that with your family or your life? And then can you also talk about how because of COVID, because of the restrictions, because of everything, this actually probably has made you guys stronger and really um, made, made you guys really look at the importance of, of, of really focusing on this season. Uh, COVID hasn't affected me. I don't know anyone that, that got sick from it or, or anything like that, but, um, you know, it's been, it's been tough, you know, on the, on the world, uh, this past year, um, it's, it's terrible, uh, but, you know, we can get through this and, um, you know, at the start of the season, coach BA said the most disciplined team, you know, we'll, we'll win it and, um, won't lose players due to COVID and, and things like that. And, you know, we just try to stick by that and, um, you know, abide by all the rules and, th- and things like that throughout this season. And, uh, you know, we've done a good job. we gotta, we got to keep doing that. Last week of the season, you know, we got to do that, make sure we can't lose any of our players um, because of COVID and, um, you know, have our full team come Sunday. Next up, we'll Thomas Herodel from TV3 Sports in Denmark. Yes, uh, hi, Miss Evans. Um, How are you doing? I just wondered what uh, what adding Brady uh, to your team has given you confidence-wise, not just you, but the whole organization. It seems like you become, all of a sudden, you become winners. <laughs> I mean, I, obviously, we became winners uh, by the playing the Super Bowl. But uh, adding a, a player like Tom Brady and what he brings to a team is, you know, quarterbacks are one of the most – Quarterback is the most important position I feel in uh, in all of team sports, and uh, you know adding the greatest of all time with a quite to wins. Next up, we'll go to Mark Berman, and just a reminder to media to have your affiliation listed in your display name. I wish I could see everybody's face so I can like get a good gauge of the question. You know, it's it's, it's Mark Berman from Fox in Houston. Did a story with your family. A few days ago with Heather, with Makia, with um, uh, your niece, Kennedy, talk to Coach Temple. What is it Kennedy. like for you? You're from Galveston Ball. Talk about your journey from Galveston. What does it mean to you that they mean so much to you and you mean so much to them, what you're, what you're doing right now? And they're so fired up about it. Uh, my family is, is everything. You know, they're the reason why I do what I do. The, they've helped me get into this position. Without them, I would not be here. Um, you know, I love my mom, my, my daughter. Um, my sister, my, my niece, uh, they'll be at the game this Sunday, and they're, they're so excited to be here. 
And uh, I actually saw the interview. It was it was cool seeing my my daughter give an interview. Uh, I thought she did a pretty good job uh, for her first one. Uh, but my family means everything to me, and my city Galveston means everything to me. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be representing my city and my family in uh, one of the biggest games. Next up is Alexander Spur from Skyboat News. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? My Mighty fine. I was uh, just wondering, obviously, with the Super Bowl, everything seems to be a little bit more intense. And arguably, no one's more intense in the league than your quarterback, Tom Brady. Has there been anybody leading up to this big game that's been able to match his intensity? Uh, so as somebody on our team or a different team? On your team, during, during practice. Match his intensity? Yes. Uh, a lot of guys. A lot of guys. Tom can get pretty intense, but a lot of guys on our team can get real fiery and intense as well. Um, you know, all the captains, me, Devin White, Levante, um, Will Golston, JPP, Sue. I mean, we've got so many guys that just get intense and, and just thrive off that. Next up, we'll go to Alec Lace from First Class Fatherhood. Hey, Mike, what's doing? Uh, my show focuses on fatherhood and family life. I love what you've done with the Mike Evans Family Foundation, how you turned your tragedy into something positive. I'm just curious, along your journey, how did becoming a father change your perspective on life? Uh, taught me to be more patient, taught me to be more selfless. Uh, you know, bringing in a human in this world is a, is a tall task. Uh, you don't just have a kid for a couple years or, or you have it for the rest of their life. And you want to be a better role model and be a better person for your child. And uh, I think that's how everybody should be. And, uh, you know, my children have, you know, definitely shaped me into the man that I've become. You know, I used to be very immature uh, before I had kids. Uh, it definitely helped me mature and uh, just want to be a better person. Next up, go to Nate Davis from USA Today. Hi, Mike. You mentioned that uh, you hadn't been on a team before that had made so few mental errors, and you, you uh, ascribe that to Tom. What, 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 are, what are the little things that Tom has brought outside the box score um, that you can't see in the numbers that, that have really helped you guys kind of get from where you were a year ago to, to where you are now? Well, I mean, him just coming over, just period, his play is a big reason for it. Uh, we, we have a very talented roster, but adding you know, QB of his caliber um, – that's why we're doing what we're doing. But it's just little meetings here and there. Um, just extra meetings just to make sure everything's fine-tuned and uh, everybody knows what they're doing in the games. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Just extra meetings uh, to make sure everybody's questions are asked going into the game. Now we'll go to Peter Clark with Syracuse University. Syracuse. Hi, Mike. Um, you've had a great start to your career, seven consecutive thousand yard seasons, the first player to do that. What would a Super Bowl winning this year with Tom Brady mean for your legacy? A uh, legacy, that's for people to debate on and, and to remember. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming it'll be big time. And as a goal of mine, it'll be huge. It'll be one of my best accomplishments, you know, in the sport, if not the best uh, that I've done. So I definitely want to get this. Uh, as a goal of mine, and um, you know, we've been working all all year for it, and uh, you know, we got to come out fighting because we're going against a great team. So, we'll go to John Ledyard with PeterReport.com. Mike, you're also a captain on this team, not not only just a star receiver. So, I'm curious your role in that as you go back and look at tape and watch these playoff games and you evaluate the wide receiver room. Just what's your thought process on these three playoff games, how the wide receiver rooms played, what you guys have done well, what you can do better going into obviously the biggest game of your careers? Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a captain. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very uh, honored by that. Um, you know, my, that my teammates have respect for me and they hold me in that regard. Um, you know, a lot of we have a lot of leaders on this team that aren't even captains. And uh, it's just been a great year as far as leadership and, you know, guys, you know, being on the same page. Um, our receiver room, we've made some big plays in these playoff games, but we're going to need to have our best game uh, if we want to beat, beat this team because this team is, is loaded uh, just like us. Uh, their offense is very explosive. So we have to put points on the board 
Uh, if not, it's going to be tough. So, you know, the receiver room, we have to play well, and I have to have my best game as well. Next up is Derek Spillone from Spillone Sports. Hey, Mike. Uh, first off, just want to say congratulations on all your success, not only on the field, man, but the amazing work you've done through your foundation. Uh, I actually had the chance to work with the Bucks during the 2017 Hard Knock season on the social media side. So when you launched your family foundation, I remember covering some of those events and seeing the growth you've had there, man. So uh, congrats on that, first off. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, so just wanted to jump in as you prepare for the biggest game of your career thus far. Uh, when you reflect back on your journey, this season you had a career high in touchdown receptions with 13 but can you take us back to your high school days during your senior season where you caught your first touchdown pass and kind of provide that breakdown of that playing moment? De definitely. Um, we were playing Houston Wheatley. Uh, it was my senior year. I didn't play football in high school prior. I played a little bit in ninth grade, uh, but 10th, 11th grade, I didn't play. Uh, first first game on varsity playing against Houston Wheatley. I run a – it's a post corner. It was in the red zone, and I kind of – the quarterback threw a great job, Rodney Altmore. Shout out to my my, uh, my high school quarterback and good friend. He threw me my first high school touchdown pass. I kind of bobbled it a little bit, and then I, I ended up making the catch. Um, Xavier Howard was actually on that team. Uh, I didn't score on him on that play, but, you know, I, I knew he was a good player back then. But I remember that. It was uh, we were playing against Houston Wheatley, Xavier Howard, and uh, I, was, I scored my first touchdown. on a, It was like a post curl, I guess it was. Next up, will we go back to Steve Isbitz with Joe Bucks fan? Good, good question. Let me think a little bit. Hey, Mike, can you reflect back on two things? Uh, one, kind of how hard it was for you to play 16 games through those injuries early this year, maybe that journey, and also what it means to you that the, you know, the offense and the coaches really worked to make sure you got that 1,000 yards late in the season. Yeah, I mean, injuries are a part of the game. You know, this season I've faced the most that I've faced throughout my career. Uh, but, you know, with a lot of prayers and a lot of hard work and a, a good training staff, um, you know, I was able to play through all those injuries and, um, you know, try to help my team win games. Uh, I hate being out. If, if I can't play, then I'll know if I couldn't play. I'd sit. But, you know, my team, I feel like my team needs me. Uh, to be out there, and uh, you know, I just I just want to try to help my team win, uh, whether I'm hurt or not. Um, and the coaching staff uh, did a great job at the end of the season, uh, trying to give me that record. Uh, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, they didn't have to do that, you know. I'm fine with winning and and getting the moments like this, but you know, having that record and being the first in NFL history, uh, it means a lot. So, you know, I'm appreciative of, of Tom and uh, the coaching staff doing that. Next, we'll go to Christian Torres. Hello. Hello, my name is Christian Tevues from Argentina NFL and No Huddle. What is the sensation that be a part of the, of the Super Bowl? Is different than the training or it's exactly wild? Um, you said, it, is it sensational? What's the sensation of making it to the Super Bowl? Yes. Is that your question, sir? What is the, the, the sensation of playing the Super Bowl? And what is the training? Is it similar of any play, any game, or extraordinary? Man, we're so excited. It's the biggest game that you could be a part of. And, um, you know, I'm just happy to be in this position. Our team is happy. And we're going to give our best efforts to put on a, a great show and try to get the job done come Sunday. Does that answer your question, sir? The training is the same as well. I think you asked that. Next up, we'll go to Jonathan Adams with heavy.com. We'll actually go back to Mark Berman now. Hey, Mike. Um, I talked to your coach, basketball coach at Galveston Ball, Coach Temple. Um, what, did, what did uh, he mean to you uh, in your journey? And what did, what did playing sports, football, and basketball at Galveston Ball mean to you in your journey? But specifically, Coach, Coach Temple, for sure. Oh, Coach Temple was a great, uh, you know, mentor. Um, you know, I lost my father at a young age. You know, I had 
a lot of great men in my life to show me, you know, how to carry myself and, uh, you know, how to act as a man. Uh, Coach, Coach Gerald Temple and Coach Terry Petaway, um, you know, my two basketball coaches, one AAU, one uh, my high school coach. And, uh, you know, he taught me a lot. You know, I learned a lot from him. Um, he'll be at the game come Sunday. And, uh, you know, my, my times at Galveston Ball was some of the funnest times, you know, I've had in my life uh, while playing sports. And, uh, you know, it meant a lot and uh, it helped me get to where I am. Next question will come from Rachel Hallowell. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Oh, good. Good. I'm with the NFL Canada. So some fans in Canada were just wondering what your favorite thing is about Canada and if you could answer in your best Canadian accent. <laughs> so is Canadian, a lot of Canadians speak really good English and they, they don't have like much of an accent, but uh, my teammate, uh, Au Claire, Aunt Au Claire, he has like a French kind of accent. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't do a really good French accent, but I love how kind the people in Canada are. I've been to Canada twice in my life. I've been to Edmonton and to Fort Basketball Tournament in high school. And I went to Montreal uh, on like a business venture. Uh, both times were great. The people were, were unbelievable. Unbelievably kind people in Canada. Next question will come from Trey Jean Watkins from Black Sports Online. Hey Mike, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Doing good. Uh, forgive me if this is already been asked, but you and uh, Levante David, I guess you could say the two main stars for uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the years, have seen a lot of ups and downs with the organization uh, regarding not making the playoffs and seen a lot of um, unfortunate ends to your season. But this year, you, you finally made the playoffs for your first time in your career. And not only that, uh, you're playing in the Super Bowl on Sunday. So um, if you can, what what are, what has been your emotions um, leading up to this game? Just realizing that all the hard work that you put in uh, throughout the years has finally led to not only the playoffs, but playing in the Super Bowl and not only just any Super Bowl, but the Super Bowl in your home stadium. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, it hasn't really hit me yet what I'm going to feel, but, um, you know, I know I'm very, I'm very excited and very happy to be in this position. Um, I wish that COVID wouldn't have, interfered with everything and, and this included. Um, but, you know, it's been a, it's been a lot of downs. You said the ups and downs, it's been a lot of downs, uh, but now we're, we're, we're up and uh, we're gonna try to stay going up uh, as long as we're playing. So uh, it's been an unbelievable run this year. Um, it was all worth it. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get the job done Sunday and then uh, stay on this track. Next question will come from Ben Spiegel with New York Times. Hi, Mike. I was wondering why, from a philosophical standpoint, if you could speak to it, why the downfield passing element is so important in your offense and how Tom has come to thrive within it over the course of the season. Uh, we're a very balanced team, I feel. I feel like we're a very balanced team. But if you, if you don't have a down-the-field game, then it'll be easier for you to guard. Um, so, you know, teams play us in a lot of cover two and too high because of our playmaking ability uh, at the receiver and tight end position. Um, so, you know, we have to like, you know, nickel and dime them for a little bit. And then when they start being more aggressive, we try to hit them over the head. And, uh, you know, I feel like we're a very balanced offense. And, uh, you know, good teams have to have uh, downfield threats. Next up, we'll go to Zenny Abraham. Zenny. Mr. Abraham, Mr. Evans. Yes. Oh, Mr. Aben? Yes, sir. Yeah, Zinni Abraham, Zinni, 62 Media, pleasure to meet you. I'm going to ask you, well. I asked Mr. Godwin, what's the difference between catching a pass from Jameis Winston versus uh, Tom Brady in terms of styles, you know? What, what Chris uh, say? Chris said that there wasn't much of a difference. He said that Jameis was a gunslinger, Tom more balanced. But I was thinking more like, for example, the spin on the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, they both throw really good spirals, uh, and they both throw with touch on the throws that they have to throw with touch. Um, it's very similar. Like all quarterbacks, most quarterbacks throw very similar. Uh, Mike Glennon, my, one of my older quarterbacks, I can tell the difference when he throws the ball, but mo most of the other quarterbacks, they throw it 
pretty much the same. Like Mike Lennon threw it super hard. Like your thumbs are about to break. Uh, but you know, Jamison, uh, Tom, they throw very similar. Most quarterbacks throw very similar. If they can throw, they're good NFL quarterbacks. Next up, we'll go to Roderick Curitan. Hey, Mike, uh, Roderick from Florida Podcast. Uh, so, with seven straight a thousand yard seasons to start your to start your career, do you consider yourself to be one of the top five best receivers in the league right now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely think I'm, um, you know, a top five receiver in this league. Uh, there's so many great receivers. Uh, you can choose between any style, um, you know, big, uh, smaller. Like, there's so many great receivers in this game. But I definitely think as far as talent and accomplishments, I'm in the top five discussion uh, right now, I'm trying to go be the, be the number one guy. Next up, we'll go to Harold Kuntz, Fox 4, WDAF. Hey, Mike. Oh, by the way, for the moderator, it's Kuntz. Just FYI. But, uh, Mike, uh, when you look at this Chiefs secondary, especially a guy like Legere Sneed coming back uh, and Tyron Matthew back there, just your overall impressions on what they are, uh, what they've accomplished and how you feel you guys match up against them? I feel like we match up well. Um, you know, last time we played them, they started off fast on us. They have a really aggressive style on defense, uh, long corners, um, really smart safeties, uh, good D-line. Um, but I feel like we match up good. I feel like we were just getting rolling in the second half uh, in week 12 when we played them. I think it was week 12. Um, I feel like we were starting to get a groove going. Um, you know, I hope that that momentum from the end of that game can carry over uh, to this game. Next up is Anthony Amy from Black News Channel. Hey, Mike, congratulations on making it to the big game. Um, I just asked uh, your teammate, Dominican Sue, about uh, just the dynamic of the coaching cycle and how much players in the league are paying attention um, to the numbers and the lack of opportunities for black head coaches. Um, mm -hmm. Coach Arians said moments ago that he was flat out pissed off that Todd, or that uh, Byron Leftwich didn't even get any interviews uh, considering what he's done the last couple of years. Um, how much do you all pay attention to these coaching cycles as players? And what does it mean to you as a player to be able to see your coaching staff and see three black coordinators that are not just there because of their skin color, but as Coach Arians puts it, because they are more than qualified to be in those positions? I think that's what matters, qualification. If you're qualified, no matter gender or, or race or anything like that, it shouldn't matter. If you're qualified, then if you're the best available available for the job, then you should get it. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate throughout my you know football career to have um, you know minority coaches and uh, you know white coaches. I've had high school my high school coach was was a was a black man. Uh, my basketball coach was a black man. Uh, my AAU coach was a black man. Um, my college coach uh, after Mike Sherman I got fired from Texas a and Coach Kevin Sumlin was a black man. Uh, so you know, I've had uh, I've been fortunate to have you know. All, all race, uh, you know, black and white, you know, as my coach. And, uh, you know, they were all great coaches. So if you're qualified, then you know, I think you should get the opportunity. Regardless of race. Next up will be Steve Isbitz from Joe Bucks Fan. Hey, Mike, who would you say on this Bucks team is the, the untold story, the player that you look at on the roster and say, man, that guy really came a long way, busts his ass, the fans don't know about it, and I'm really super proud of him. Can you pick one guy out? Uh, I mean, there's just too many to name. There's just too many to name. Uh, there's guys that, that I'm proud of that are on practice squad right now that haven't even got an opportunity to play, but I know – when they get that opportunity, they're gonna make the most of it. Um, but there's just too many to get, too many guys to name. Can't just pick this one. Now we'll go to Josh Padilla with MTSU Athletics. Hey Mike, uh, congratulations on making it to the Super Bowl. Um, I wanted to ask Thank you, you uh, going up against Travarius Ward this Sunday. What what does he do well? Uh, he's he's long and he's physical and he can he can run he can run pretty good. 
Um, you know, last time we played him, uh, he was giving us problems with, with his length at the line, him and Breland, and, uh, you know, their physicality. So we have to match that physicality. And, uh, you know, I think we will this time around. Next up will be Gene Thompson. Hey, Mike. Hey, Hello. how do you feel uh, being able to play in your own backyard? I mean, are you nerves uh, having, you know, playing the Super Bowl right there in Tampa? Oh, I'm sorry, what did you say about that first part? He said... I said, how does it feel, you know, playing the Super Bowl right there in your own backyard? Are you feeling any nerves right now playing in Tampa? Nerves? No, 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 sir. No, sir. I, um, I don't really get nervous. Uh, for games. I never really have. I don't know why. Um, it's just a game. It's fun. It's fun to play. Um, as you as you play more, though, it hurts. It hurts a little bit more, but it's still fun, man. It's uh, we're playing the kids game for money. You know, I know it's a lot of grown men out there playing, but, you know, the gist of it is the kids game for money. And, uh, you know, I don't really feel the nerves, um, but I'm excited. I'm excited to be playing, you know, the first home Super Bowl in Tampa and hopefully we can win it and make even more history. Next up will be Dan Wider with Chicago Tribune. Hey, Mike, six seconds before halftime uh, at Lambeau Field, uh, both B.A. And, and Kevin Garver said that as soon as you guys lined up that they had a sense that that was going to be a touchdown. I know you were on the opposite side of the formation. I'm curious what your eyes were telling you uh, as you guys lined up and got ready to take that shot. Uh, you said before the half? Yeah, the, the, the six seconds before the half. Oh, yeah, they didn't um, – I guess they were playing uh, out of bounds because um, me and me and Scotty had mirror routes. We had we had uh, both go balls, and uh, we both ran by our guy. And I think they were expecting it to be uh, us going for the sideline. Um, but uh, Tom threw a great ball, and Scotty outran his man. Next Huge up will play be... in the game. Huge play. Next up is Roderick Curitan. Hey, Mike, Roderick again from the Fluid Podcast. So kind of a fun question here. Since we're a podcast, I wanted to know, do you like to listen to podcasts? And if so, what is your favorite podcast? Mm, that's tough. It's a lot of good podcasts out there. I don't listen to them much. I'm more of a – I like getting on YouTube and watching, like, old highlights and things like that. Um, okay, you can, check, you can check out ours, I'll tell you that. You can give us a give us. Is it a good, listen. though? Is it, is it worth it? Is it worth it? It's, it's worth it. Podcast worth it, could I, be long. Is it a long podcast or is it, is it shorter? It's not long. It's not long. It's very insightful. And we boost you all the time, so you definitely should check us okay. out. I appreciate it. <laughs> For sure, yeah. I, I listen to um, I Am Rappaport podcast. My boy Michael Rappaport, he's a big troll, but uh, he, he really means well, even though he's he bashing a lot of people. But it, it can be funny at times. I uh, saw so the I Am Rap Report and then the T Ross podcast. I listen to T Ross, uh, Terrence Ross podcast. Next up, we'll go to Jack Rathborn with The Independent. Hi, Mike. It's Jack here from uh, London at The Independent. Pleasure to speak to you. Pleasure to all mine. Yeah, so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, the development this season with Tom. Firstly, what was the uh, the differences between your expectations and reality of working together? And secondly, obviously, this season is kind of uh, separated into two parts um, before the uh, the win streak and before win streak and after. So, just wondered if there was one moment in training or in a game, a certain play, where it was that eureka moment where you knew that you'd earned the trust of each other and the uh, effectiveness on the field. Okay. Um, well, that my expectations were were exceeded, um, and then some uh, by Tom. Just I knew he was a, a great player, but you know he's getting older, and he throws the he, he still feels like he's young. Um, you know I knew he was a great player already, but he's he's forty three and he still can spin it. Uh, he can still move a little bit. You know I know that's never really been his game, but he can move a little bit for a forty three year old man, and. Um, this season, man, it's been it's been uh you know it's had its ups and downs this year, a um, lot of a lot of bumps to go through, I, I guess. Uh, you know, this is a fairly new team. Uh, we were just learning on the fly, and uh, you know, I feel like we're still peaking and we're still going up. Um, you know, we're, we're we're fortunate to be in the Super Bowl. We we played hard, we made the plays, 
uh, when we needed to make them. And, uh, you know, we were just learning throughout the season, you know, about each other and, and uh, you know, getting through tough times together. Next up, we'll go back to Dan Wider with Chicago Tribune. Mike, I was curious what kind of growth you've seen in Scotty Miller this season and, and specifically how his confidence has evolved. Oh, yeah. The, well, I mean, the confidence was, was always there. It's just, you know, he was, he was injured last year. You know, he, he, had, he faced a lot of injuries last season. Uh, took him a while to, to get on the field because he, he was hurt, and then he got hurt again uh, right around the time me and, me and Chris had got hurt last year. Uh, it was just about getting the opportunities um, as well, you know, staying healthy and getting opportunities. And uh, that'll build confidence in anybody. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a hell of a player. Uh, a lot of small guys like that that can run, they don't really track the ball that good. He's one of those guys, him, Tyreek Hill, they're like smaller guys that can that can run fast and catch the ball extremely well. Um, so, you know, he's been balling this year. And, uh, you know, I hope he has a great game in the Super Bowl. You have time for a couple more questions for Mike. Next up, we'll go to Angel Wells with NABJ Sports. I think what makes it hi Mike. Hard to win one how does it feel to catch footballs from arguably the greatest quarterback of all time? And how much has Tom Brady impacted you as a person on and off the field this season? It's great catching catching passes from the goat. Um, you know, I never thought I'd be able to get that opportunity. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I grew up not liking Tom Brady because I was a Peyton Manning fan, and now I'm the biggest Tom Brady fan. So uh, it's great being able to catch the balls from him, and. Um, what was the second part of that question? I forgot the second part. They're now unmuted. I'm muted. Sorry about that, Mike. Yeah, what was the second part of that question? Hi, Mike. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Awesome. I was just saying, how much has Tom Brady impacted you as okay, a person? Okay, okay. I remember. I'm yeah. sorry about that. Um, tremendously. Uh, the way he carries himself, the way he, he takes care of his body is – I've never seen anything like it. Um, you know, I see why he's been able to play so long. Um, the way he treats everybody in the facility, um, whether it's, you know, one of our janitors or somebody that's cooking or somebody like that, he just treats everybody uh, with respect and uh, he's just such a nice guy. Uh, you know, I've been learning a lot from him on and off the field. He's a, he's a great teammate and mentor to have. And last question here, we'll go to Rob Mahdi with the AP. Hey, Mike, I was just asking Chris Godwin about your, influ your influence on him. And he talked about beyond the field, beyond the patterns and the routes and everything else, but just the work that you do in the community and how that's impacted him and that's how that's influenced him to want to give back and to want to do more. Just how important is that to you? I know you're the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee. And how does it feel when you hear other guys say that's inspired them and motivated them? It means the world to me. Um, you know, I've always been a guy that, that wants to give back, you know, and I'm in the position to, to do that now. Um, you know, it just means a lot to me. And, uh, you know, there have been guys that I looked up to as a young player and, um, you know, they kind of showed me the way as well. So. Um, it's just a cycle that a good cycle that the, the NFL and pro sports have uh, with, with, with good guys that uh, just want to help people because uh, we're given so much. We're so blessed. And uh, we just want to just help people uh, while we're in this position. That's all the time we have today. So that'll conclude today's availability session with Mike Evans. Mike, we appreciate the time. All right. Thank you. all God bless. Thank you for being that water. Okay, right.